Do that too. Okay. Hey! <laughs> We're on! <laughs> Welcome Tennessee Valley to this beautiful Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us here today. We're excited. I'm your Tuesday morning host, Matt Ryerson. This is my co-host, Matthew Tolbert. The Mario Manningham to your Eli Manning, Matt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's, you know, let's jump into it, we, brother. I think we need to. I think we need to. Eli Manning is better than Peyton Manning. Well, he, he's won more Super Bowls. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and if you're measuring them by championships, I guess that's, you know, a couple nights ago, obviously, most people probably watched the Super Bowl or a big part of the Super Bowl. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, how did your prediction turn out? Well, the team I wanted to win won, yes. but it was much more defensive struggle than I expected. Yeah. I expected uh, them to score in the 30s, and they didn't. It was 20, what, 21-17. 21-17. So, yeah, so, no, it, uh, it was a lot different than I expected, but... Still, the team I wanted to win won, so I'm happy. Yeah, uh, my prediction was was less right than yours was. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, I also scored it high, and I had the Patriots winning that I game. I know, I know you did. And they almost did. If you didn't watch the game, it came down to the last play of the game. A Hail Mary and almost touched And it actually and looked like, because that thing didn't fall down quickly, the Tight end came over and almost caught it. So that was crazy. It was a crazy game. Lots of goings on. Sarah Anderson is going to be one of our guests today, yes. our entertainment correspondent. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about the halftime show, Madonna, mm. which which had some some uh, drama and some uh, interesting development. So we're going to we're going to save that. Uh, let's get into a, a more interesting topic than the game itself. More interesting than football game, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl commercials. Ah, uh, yes, the Super Bowl commercials. Now, there were some good ones. Over the Christmas break, I agree. Uh, over the Christmas break, uh, we did a number of uh, top ten lists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we got a lot of feedback that people either – Love them, they or they love to hate them. Yeah. But either way, they they were interested. There in was a lot of tests. hate, I think. I think there was a lot of hate. A, a lot might be an overstatement. <laughs> so a lot of people <laughs> didn't like my top ten. Uh, apparently, Gremlins is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> no, Gremlins is not a Christmas Go movie. Go rent it. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my. So in that vein, we have done a Matt Ryerson top ten. Super Bowl commercials. All right, let's hear them. Number 10 uh, was uh, the commercial. It was actually titled A Thing Called Love by Samsung. Had music. The yeah. guys were waiting in line, and somebody comes out with the phone, and they oh, start yeah, dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then that, that rock and roll guy is yeah. like playing the guitar. Yeah, and... yeah. That was cool. That was cool. Did you like that one? I, I did. I did. It was, eh, it was a foam. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I mean, there are other better ones, and I have to hear the whole list. See, I don't, I have not heard yeah. this list yet, so I have to hear the whole list to know if you've excluded any that you shouldn't have. Okay, number nine, the VW, and it was titled "The Dog Strikes Back." Yes, the dog in the beginning of the commercial is too fat to even get out the doggy door. And a VW goes by, he's trying to chase it. So he can't get out. So then he starts working out and training. <laughs> he's got like a, a ball, one of those yeah. balls. That yeah, you one of those workout <laughs> balls. He's watching videos up and down the steps. Because he couldn't get out the doggy door. Right. He got stuck in the dog. Swimming in the pool. <laughs> and then the, do the VW goes by again, and he runs out. Now, the great thing about this commercial, though, if you remember last year's VW commercial, it was the young boy in the Darth Vader outfit oh, that goes yeah. out into the driveway and he tries to use the force on it, and his dad has the remote yeah, start, yeah, yeah. and it starts it up, and he, you know, he's shocked that he just used the force to he's start. He's dressed like Darth Vader. He's dressed like Darth Vader. Well, this commercial continues. The dog is running next to the VW, and it fades, and it fades out like you would see it on the commercial, and it goes into uh, the canteen, the cantina scene in Star Wars. Uh -huh. And it has all the droids and the, the monster yes, looking yes, guys. Yes, yes, And the one the guy, guy with the messed up nose and the, stuff. My guy with the messed up nose says, oh, that commercial is better than the Vader commercial. And then he goes, <laughs> starts choking it. And you look across the cantina and there's Darth Vader <laughs> doing, doing the whole thing. Right, yeah. Choking him. And he's just now, sorry. Now, I don't know. I, that was a great commercial. It I was. almost think you got to go a little bit higher on the list. Could have, could have, could have. 
Uh, number eight, the NBC pregame song. Now, a lot of you may not have seen this, but about 15 minutes before kickoff, uh, it has, uh, if you ever watched the show the 30. The Faith Hill? Oh, no. no. It has, right. has the show 30 Rock, and they're at Alex, uh, or uh, what's his name? Uh, the star of 30 Rock. Alec Baldwin? Alec Baldwin's house. Uh-huh. And uh, they're having a Super Bowl party, and he starts singing a song about all the NBC shows. And then it shows the office, and they're doing this whole like I didn't see the showbiz. You got you got to Google that one. You got to YouTube that one. It's it's funny. I did it's, not see it's that the one. NBC pregame NBC song, and even the Today Show folks get into it. All the shows, uh, uh, SVU, uh, Criminal, uh, Law and Order. They they're in it. It's a good one. Did you did now? Did you see the now? Are you did it include the commercial? Um, where these guys say, I invented the first text message and I invented this. No, and I that invented was a good that. one. Because yeah. at the end, he says, we invented, they're on a, on a plane and they say, we inv- what's the game called? Yeah. Word power? Word, yeah, no, words with friends. Words with friends. We invented words with friends. And then the, the flight attendant comes over and looks at him and they kind of, oh, sorry, like that. Which got Alec Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of got a, Alec Baldwin in a lot right. of trouble. I thought that was funny. The next one, number seven, the reinvented... Uh, commercial, which was about Camry. They've reinvented the Camry. And they right. said, we've, we've reinvented the DMV. And they're handing out ice cream yes, cones. Yes, yes. That was a good one. Everything was reinvented. I uh, like that one. That, that was, was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. That was like pretty it. funny. Uh, early in the Super Bowl, this is one of my favorite ones to start off the Super Bowl, was the Mazda commercial, where the Mazda gets at the starting line. There's a cage cheetah. <laughs> yes, and the and cheetah they, attacks the guy. And they open the gate to, <laughs> and what you think is the cheetah's going to race the Mazda. It just turns and, around and, and chases turns the guy. Around, the guy that opened the cage and runs and tackles him. That, that was so one. funny. It sounds horrific, but it's I funny. liked it. I liked it That's a lot. It's funny. Number five, I'm not a serious guy when it comes to these commercials. Yeah. I, you know, I go back to the old Justin Timberlake commercials. He was always great yeah, in these yeah, commercials. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the Clint Eastwood Chrysler commercial. Yeah, I just I actually, I missed it last night, but I watched it this morning. That yeah. was a really good commercial. It was. And if you're going to get a spokesperson that says American, Clint yeah. Eastwood is yeah. about as good as you get. I, 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 he still looked like he wanted to jump through the screen and kill me. Yeah. yeah. Which is something that's... Clint Eastwood's tough, man. He, he is a tough man. He is. He's he like is. 85 years old, but he's tough. Number four. I really like this one because it's a flashback to my youth. Uh, it was titled Matthew's Day Off. It was a Honda commercial with Matthew Broderick. Yeah, now see, I didn't like that one as Imitating much. the old Ferris Bueller. Yeah, it's movie. like Broderick, Broderick. I did not <laughs> like that commercial. <laughs> if you like Ferris Bueller, you got to love that commercial. Yeah, that if good. you grew up in the 80s, you got to yeah. like that commercial. Number three, uh, it was an Acura commercial. Uh, the Seinfeld Acura commercial. Yes. Where he wants to buy, he wants to be the first one to buy this Acura. And they say, well, you're number two on the list. <laughs> and so he finds the guy that's got number one. He's trying to bribe him. At first, he starts with 20. He's trying all these things to try and get this guy. Finds a Martian. And oh, that's too much. That's too much. <laughs> but then finally, it was the zip line. Right, it's a zip line. The guy sells it, and then Jay Leno swoops in and he's got he gives him jet a pack jet pack squirrel suit. <laughs> and, and then suit. Jerry goes, Leno. Leno. <laughs> Soup Nazi makes an appearance. In That's, that right, too, so. That's right, he does. That's right, he does. Number two, the, uh, and this one, I, not everybody liked it as much as I did. It was a Toyota commercial. It was called Happy, The Happy Grad. Where they, they, they walk oh, the yes. guy out, he's blindfold. Mom, don't you think a blindfold's a little much? And they get him a, a refrigerator to take to college. And they yeah. have a bow on it. But then they have, they have the Toyota sitting parked behind it. And yes. he, goes, he goes berserk. He's going, ah, I then, love it. And the, the parents are still like, no, he'll, he'll, he'll wear himself out. Yeah, let, let him wear himself. I think he's losing momentum. He just never does his friends. Never does. Best Until gift the ever. next door neighbor Best gift who had the car, he drives off. He's like, he drives off. Mom, he stole, stole my car. <laughs> That's a good one. And then <laughs> this one was by far my favorite, uh, the Doritos commercial. This is number one? This is number one. The Doritos commercial. You didn't see nothing is the title of it. And this is the commercial where the guy <laughs> sees the dog filling in a hole in the, in the flower bed. And he just sees a, a, a leash that says Fluffy on it. And then he looks to the telephone pole and there's a picture of a cat with the collar that says Fluffy. And he realized the dog had done in the cat yes. and buried him yes. in the garden. And he turns back and the dog's sitting right in his face. 
and he's, he's all nervous, and a dog just slips him a bag of Doritos <laughs> with a note on it that you says, didn't you nothing. didn't see nothing. <laughs> and so it shows the guy, the last clip, he's in the living room, he's eating his Doritos, and his wife says, honey, did you see the cat? And he looks out the, the window, and the dog's sitting out there with just a bag of Doritos <laughs> hanging down, <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. <laughs> Now, now yes. that's that was a good one. I wouldn't put one. that one number one, although it's funny. There are a couple that you <laughs> you had missing. There was um, the dogs barking the uh, Imperial March of Star Wars. For yeah, that was good. The da 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 da, da. and they had they had like a Princess Leia dog. Yeah, and they had a Chewbacca dog, and they had all these dogs. That was good. That, that was, was good. funny. And then also there was the Twilight. The Twilight yes, commercial. The vampire, where they pull up the with the Audi. Headlights. The Audi had the with highlights. The LED says, it was like uh, sun, uh, we've bottled sunlight. Yeah. And he just pulls up to a, a vampire party. And, they, and the and lights vaporizes. get on there, and it's like sunlight, and they all die. They yeah. all get vaporized. vaporized. That was, was a funny commercial because I was actually in the watching the Super Bowl with a bunch of Twilight fans. There was, so. a, there was also a good one that uh, that I did not mention where the guy is in his cubicle and he says, I, I just don't think I can do this to his boss. And his boss goes, ba 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 And then everybody, like the whole factory, are, da, da, da. yeah, they're doing the whole song. And then at the end he goes, uh, I guess I can give it just one more try. And they're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. That was good. That's a little bit of an overkill. Yeah, a little bit of overkill there. Now, now at my house, what happens is everybody talks during the game, and then the commercial comes on. Everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get quiet. You'll be able to listen so, to the commercial. So I'm sure you guys are all the same. You just saw our, our the depth of our sports uh, detail. There's a sports show on this channel. We'll allow them to. to they can talk the about game. the sports all they want. We need to talk about the commercials. That's I get right. you. I hear That's you. Right. There. Except we're really happy the Giants are world champions. There you go. Actually, That's... we're just happy the New England Patriots are not. You're just jealous of Tom Brady. I know. I know. All right. We have a great program. We're going to take a quick look at the weather here. But we have some great guests today. We've got Sarah Anderson, Andrea Lockerbie from Bradley County Schools with an exciting program. Sounds Today's good. weather's going to be gorgeous. High 50s, sunny. Tomorrow, very much similar. Mostly sunny in the mid 50s. And then Thursday, more of the same. Mid 50s, mostly sunny. Hopefully, put away your umbrella for a week or you so. You know what I like? I like that uh, that trip. low of 31 there that I saw. That cool was, and that's crisp. really nice right cool there. Cool and crisp. Yeah, it should be nice. I'm so, looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully, you can put away your umbrella. It's supposed to be nice all the way through the weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday morning. We're going to be right back with Andrea Lockerbie. Stick with us. Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Welcome. What? How long? But, oh, premature, Andrew. Yeah. yeah. You're all ready, ready to leave. Is yeah. What no, it's like, can Are I we leave keeping now? you from something, Andrew? <laughs> no. You busy? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. 
<laughs> Welcome back, Tennessee Valley. We appreciate you being here. I'm already getting text messages about our choices for top 10 commercials. Already? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness insane. gracious. Saying they don't like uh, the Clint Eastwood, I guess. They don't like the What? I, I didn't even read them. Just say commercials. Oh, so. all right. All right. Anyways, we have a very special guest here this morning, Andrea Lockerbie from Bradley County Schools. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. We're really glad you're here. Uh, Andrea has actually been a guest in the past, and we talked about some fitness stuff and PE for life. But there is a really exciting development. A lot of people may have read about this in the Daily Banner, uh, our local newspaper. Uh, but now we have something called, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, a, a health mobile. Care mobile. Care mobile. Pretty Care close, mobile. Pretty close. Okay. Is so, this like a blood mobile? Well, similar. Similar, but, but it's not, not from not blood. blood. Okay. So mm -hmm. describe to us what, what is exactly, what does the health mobile do? Our, what we have is a Ronald McDonald Care Mobile, and what that does is it's we're piloting three schools: Okoy Middle School, um, Waterville Elementary School, and uh, Black Fox Elementary School. And on that mobile is either a physician or a nurse practitioner, and they're going to be providing health care at the school site to parents who provide permission to do so. It's not taking the place of a of your primary care physician but it's filling in the holes for those children who might not get to the doctor otherwise um, due to lots of different reasons. Okay, okay, so you know, and we keep hearing on the national scene uh, the whole health care crisis and how so many families can't afford health insurance and how uh, many are no longer seeing pediatricians or doctors, they, they exclusively use the ER. Mm -hmm. Is this a potential solution to that type of issue here locally? Yes, and that's one. we have several partners, and one of them being Skybridge Medical Center, um, also um, Erlanger T.C. Thompson's Children's Hospital, of course, uh, Ronald McDonald Charities, and, um, and Bradley County Schools. Uh, and with those partnerships, we realize that you know this is a benefit not only to our children but also to our community because our children aren't going to the ER for those expensive visits. And, you know, as a parent, it's hard if your child gets sick at six or seven o'clock at mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. You might be able to hold off to the morning. Um, maybe it can get into your pediatrician, or if you don't have a pediatrician, our uh, mobile will help direct you to that pediatrician and try to bridge that gap to to get health care to those children who don't have health care. And, and there are children out there who do not have health care. Um, and those are, that's the holes we're trying to fill, those gaps, and keep them in their seats in the classroom. So that's, we're not necessarily talking, if you already have health care, then this care mobile, is that, does it matter if you have health care insurance or not? It, it doesn't matter. We're not going to turn anybody okay. away, number one. But, um, you know, Ronald McDonald Charities, their mission is to help those that are uninsured first. So. Um, like I said, we're not turning many away. However, our focus is on those children who may not have insurance or um, are not getting to the doctor or they're repeatedly coming in and, and sick, chronically ill, and obviously there's some, some more issues that mm -hmm. need to be addressed. Now, this, the, when, when does this start? Well, we officially started this month and we're phasing in slowly. And in fact, the mobile is uh, at Okoy Middle today. Um, and uh, the Dr. Hamp is our pediatrician. She's an adolescent specialist, and uh, she works at T.C. Thompson. She's actually going to be on the mobile every Monday, uh, as well as our nurse practitioner. And on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they're going to be at Waterville Elementary, and on Thursday, Fridays, Black Fox Elementary. Now, th this is important to note too. The quality of care is impressive. I mean, these aren't you know just people in school or this is a, a full-fledged doctor that's a, that's mm -hmm. a pediatrician working with children on the health mobile so the yes. quality of care is really high very high very high and I think you know our I, and I didn't mention I get through all of our partners but the United Way is one of our partners as well and that was something in our application because we have such good partners you know we have TC Thompson you have Sky Ridge we've got people on board that want to do this, that, that, you know, and it's a big project. It's something new for our area, but it's not something new in our state or even in the nation. There's school-based clinics all over the United States. We're just not used to them here in our area. Um, there's several in Tennessee. They do really well. Um, it's just a matter of, of marketing and, and explaining why this works and what we're trying to do um, to get it going. Now, I think it should be noted uh, that Andrea and Kathy Jennings, who's part mm -hmm. of Erlanger's team as well, and, uh, Jane over at Ronald McDonald House, of course, we're just thrilled at United Way to be a small part of this uh, collaborative effort. Uh, but but I think it's it's valuable to note that you, you all did a lot of uh, footwork 
and, and research beforehand. And, and this is not going to hurt our local pediatricians. In fact, the pediatricians are inviting this. They wanna see this there because the truth is, they're gonna see on the Caremobile a lot of services and program or, or diagnoses that need to actually get into a pediatrician right. that otherwise might not have. Right, in the other communities where we've watched this come into fruition, it's actually increased the referrals to the pediatricians, um, which is a good thing, you know, if, if they need further services, we, we need specialists <coughs> in. Um, but also decreases, um, for us, some of the frequent things like the flu, uh, we can get in and test the flu fairly quickly and get it treated versus a child that might linger on for two or three days while everybody in that classroom is sick by that point. Right. Um, so there's a lot of benefits both ways and also, you know, um, if you've been a parent that has had a child sick, sometimes it's hard to take off two or three days of work. Mm take to the doctor, medicine. I mean, we gladly do it, but there's a lot of folks that cannot, you know, that's the light bill and, and we understand that. We don't, that's kind of why we're here. Right. Mm -hmm. So now the uh, nurse practitioner and, and those people, they will, what, they'll be able to write uh, mm -hmm. subscriptions, <laughs> prescriptions mm -hmm. and uh, and all of that stuff. It's it's a, it's not just an evaluation. Correct. It's, actual so service care. It's, it's likely would get to happen when you went to a walk-in clinic. They can write prescriptions mm -hmm. um, just like you would at a walk-in clinic. That's a, it's amazing. It's amazing to have this available at the school. So I know there's one question some of our viewers may have. Uh, if they have a son or daughter at a Coe Middle School or one of these schools where you're piloting this program, mm -hmm. uh, how, how do they get their kids in to be seen? I mean, what, what's the process there? Okay. Well, at all three of those schools, we have full-time nurses, which is very important, and they run triage. For us. Basically, your school nurse is doing what she's been doing all along um, with an extra step. Instead of calling you and saying, Johnny's got a fever, um, I've... Um, you filled out the forms that you have parental consent to go out to the mobile. Uh, would you like for them to be seen by the mobile and would you like to come in for that visit? So it's just another step that our school nurses can provide. Now all of our pilot schools have sent home um, parent permission forms that have to be sent back into the school and that we keep that on record um, that yes I do want my child to be seen. However we are also contacting the parent as well for each, before each visit to see if yes, you want to be there or yes, you still want them to see, be seen. Oh, that's great. So the parent is our, is our ultimate partner. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, that's the mamas and daddies and the guardians and the grandparents that, that have the final say, um, but we want them involved. But the difference is traditionally the nurse would call and say, little Johnny has a fever, come, come get, get him. him. You got to take off work. You got to leave school or whatever you're doing. You got to come, little John, get little Johnny, and, and take him to the doctor yourself. Mm -hmm. Now they're essentially making a call and say, "Hey, we can check this out now, see what's going on, give you a report. If you want to wait by the phone, we can give you a call in about half hour or something." Correct. That's Correct. amazing. Correct. Amazing. Oh, that's really service. nice. So again, really quickly, what schools are we at? Okoy Middle School, Black Fox Elementary School, and Waterville Elementary School. And and you mentioned pilot. Is there a possibility of expanding this? Because I'm guessing there's some parents watching this program <laughs> saying, "Man, I wish I had this at my school." Is that a possibility in the future? That is possible. You know, we are piloting because this is a new program. We want to start off small and work through all the kinks. But yes, we would like to eventually spread this out and also maybe do some brick and mortar clinics where you would actually have a clinic in your school building. Mm. We've talked about possibly Bradley Central High School being a great location for that. Um, also opening up, oh, and when we get to the point we feel comfortable, we can open it up to the rest of the district. So if you're sick at another school, let's say you're sick at um, Charleston Elementary School, you could drive your child to Okoy Middle School. We're going to get to that point, but right now, you know, just starting in January, we don't want to know what the numbers are. Um, just kind of that's why you do a pilot to work through all these kinks. Mm -hmm. You know, this is so exciting because it addresses two of the major health care issues, which is accessibility, which so many people struggle with and cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ability to literally go out to a health mobile and that they can take care of your kid at school. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a situation this past week at Ocoee Middle where there was a student that kind of had an incident in school and gym class, which is prone to happen when kids are running around. And to have a pediatrician mm -hmm. on site to check this child out is That's extraordinary right. service. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And any, you know, any parent that's, that's watching, that's at, especially one of those three schools that wants to see the mobile come out on one of the days, they'll be glad to take you for a tour. You know, inside is just like walking to the clinic. There's two private um, uh, patient rooms 
and a processing room in the center where, you know, just like you would get your blood pressure and that thing's done. It was, it, it's amazing when you go inside. It yeah. really is. It's kid friendly, it's very, but yeah. it's very professional. It's very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, all the necessary medical equipment is there. It's outstanding. Mm -hmm. So, well, congratulations. I know you put a lot of work into this. Congratulations on yeah, pulling this fantastic. off. Fantastic. We're and we're looking forward to hearing more reports from you and, and great success. So thanks for joining us, Andrea. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Hey, stick with us. We have Sarah Anderson for Entertainment Correspondence. We give here the scoop on the halftime show, which I know everybody's on there. Edge of their seats waiting to hear about. Edge, right on the edge. edge. Stick gonna, with us. Gonna, stick gonna, with gonna, us. Gonna, we'll right be right on, back. Right on the edge. <laughs> Would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Byron Winters with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Contact me for all of your business insurance needs. From general liability to workers' comp, commercial auto, and business umbrellas, Landmark Insurance has you covered. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. <laughs> is our segue shorter? It seems like it normally... It's, I don't know. It's, ah, it's like... We're back. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We appreciate you joining us on this Tuesday morning. It's going to be a beautiful week. So yes, it is. Hopefully, we're getting you kicked off right. Right now, joining us, our entertainment correspondent, Sarah Anderson. Sarah, there's, a lot, of, there's a lot of buzz <laughs> yeah. about this uh, halftime there show. There is a lot of buzz, both by the common folk and um, the celebrities themselves have been fighting on Twitter. The, the really? Last yeah. The common um, folk. The common folk. See, yeah. this is, we get this expert opinion <laughs> because she's got the connections. That's right. I do. That's, that's yeah, why I'm you're here, Sarah. With all these so, so let's hear, what was the controversy about? I didn't, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention during halftime, to be honest with you. So, so... <laughs> Was that your break from football? Yeah, man. Okay. Well, when you got to watch the game and commercials, you eventually got to take like, a break. You, know, you, yes. you need that mental so, moment. Something to eat. Yeah, to eat exactly. Snack. So what, what was up? Just in case somebody out there didn't watch, what, what happened at halftime? Well, you know, the biggest, there are a couple different things going on. We have the fact that you have Madonna. Yes. She's a star. So no one knew how's this going to go. Is she, is she going to be fantastic? Is it going to be kind of... Or you know, is she going to be like Janet Jackson? Or well, something? and that was another... Of course, she made promises to everyone ahead of time that she would not have a wardrobe malfunction. And she didn't. She had a very modest outfit on, um, like six-inch heels, which was impressive for anyone to move around it. You could kind of see that in her motion. It was kind of, you know, stilted a little. Yeah. Um, but you have to give her props. She still went out lip-synced. She lip synced so, the whole time? There's there from what everything is saying, she oh, was lip syncing. Man. She was also singing, but See that's I mean, why you gotta have that. Bruce Springsteen. Well it wasn't there, lip syncing man. so much as having the audio in the background playing. So I mean she was singing, but Oh, it was she was with singing the, with another which with is a own, common so. A common thing. I mean, it's the Super Bowl. Yeah, how can, can you do it in a stadium? Exactly. Otherwise? That's a yeah, very there's good no way point. not to. So now, now you the can't music. Did you, I heard some of it. So she went a little old school, right? She did. She mixed in some of her newer stuff, and then she also mixed in. There was a mashup with LMFAO. There was CeeLo Green there. So you have right. the band. CeeLo Green. Who really um, the band? The marching band thing kind of yeah. threw me. But they. Really, I kind of like the marching band. 
I thought Although, it was a little it was weird a, because Madonna has her own marching band. Well, and then but. she was kind of doing this weird march, which was weird. Now, yeah, pause for a awkward. moment. CeeLo Green, yes. this is breaking news for you folks. CeeLo Green, who also is a judge for the voice, the, voice. the voice, which we'll talk about in a moment, is actually, this is breaking news, is going to be at Riverbend this year. No. Really? Absolutely. That is awesome. Yeah, that's breaking news, folks. You heard it here first, and that's true if you haven't checked their website, Does which has been posted on for like a week, I guess. I don't know. Does that make me crazy? I don't even know who the guy was other than he's a judge on he that sings show. He that song. But. Does that make me crazy? I don't know. And that lots song of other top songs. That was it's several years old, but oh, he had I mean, a weird right. robe going. Oh, that is fine. huge. I'm, I'm that's big news. CeeLo I mean, Green, that's... there you go, right here, Tennessee Valley. <laughs> well, or if you <laughs> listened to Steve Hartline yesterday, you heard it yesterday, or if you check the River Bend <laughs> website, and I'm there week. Right here, so, yeah. Tennessee Valley. But if you haven't heard it in any of those places, you heard it here first. You heard it here <laughs> first. Cutting edge news. So, so the overall performance, uh, you're saying some celebrities some weren't people, liking it? Yeah, so we have some people saying, well, I think Melissa Joan Hart had some comment about it would have been good if she'd not worn the crazy heels and had walked more, you know, had a little smoother performance. I'm I think a little they did concerned kind of that anybody up. cares what Melissa Joan Hart thinks. I know, I know. Um, Who is she? Which exactly. <laughs> exactly. Does she do that Clarissa show? Clarissa explains it all, all like oh, okay. That's years she's, ago. Yeah, yeah. She, okay. she's, she's in not that really show with, uh, with um, what's his name, Joey? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, I like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. I, she also has been on, like, Law & Order SVU and oh, had okay. other, you know, one of those. She's just doing kind of. Okay. So she didn't like it. She Well, she said, you know, props could've to Madonna. Could have been better. And then. The um, best part of that is when, the, when, when Madonna says, I'm sexy and I know it. That was the best part. That's that song. You know that song? <laughs> I'm sexy <laughs> and I know it. You, know, you don't know that don't song? I don't know that one either. Man, so. you got to get out more. <laughs> you got to start sure. listening to music. Well, we had, okay, so you had some people saying, yay, Madonna. Some people saying, eh, Madonna. The biggest thing was, I think she was, and this I think is kind of common across the board. She was upstaged by the people that were there, you uh -huh. know, in addition. You had LMFAO. You have CeeLo Green. You had MIA. Um, and, you, of course, Nicki Minaj, who did her little, she had her rap segment. And then MIA goes and makes an obscene gesture, combine that with she vulgar also, language. She, yeah, vulgar language yeah. as well. Which what is, is up with this that? This is like early in the evening. I mean, this isn't after 9 p.m. That, you know, that's yeah, like yeah, 8.30. And then, of course, NBC doesn't catch it in time. So you see that, you hear it, they blur trying to cover it up. Right. But, you know, damage is already done there. So you didn't have a wardrobe malfunction, but you did end up having a little... You know, taste. But it wasn't even Ma it wasn't even it Madonna, wasn't Madonna who did it. And of course, although she's responsible. Yes, because it was her. Um, well, technically, the NFL is responsible oh, because right. they are the ones. It's not NBC that recruits these people. It's the NFL that actually gets. So they're the gonna have to pay. Did, did you see their response publicly yesterday? No, I the haven't seen their. The response publicly, the NFL said we we were under the understanding there was a seven second delay and that NBC would catch that. Ah. NBC released a counter statement that said. It is the responsibility of the NFL to make sure to they make know what's their going on. Are, so they're yeah. like, oh, they're blaming yeah. each other. Yeah, no it's one the knows the what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. that's great. I mean, there was drama on the field mm -hmm. and there was drama at halftime. There was. I mean, there always is. Well, to make it more exciting, I guess. I will say, be, I don't but. think Madonna had the same kind of energy that she's typically no, shown. No, understandable other shows. for you know, and so yeah, you for a fifty-one-year-old woman. Some you know of the groups they chose to go along with her actually maybe not the best idea because they're just that is showing in comparison. It makes her look old, slower, and she was kind of slow. Not, and I think it's again, she the had heels, six-inch heels. Yeah, those crazy boots. Yeah. Maybe you don't wear those, but yeah, yeah it was a very. Overall, I mean, I think it was powerful in a lot of ways. It kind of, it was neat that they went, they did some of her older music along with the newer. I did like the screens on the ground. Yes, the light shows. I thought that, that was actually that the was... football field at one point. I did too. And, and then they like pulled it, it up. Yeah. And, and, I was like, the, like, and like the, the numbers were like, like shaking yeah. and vibrating. And I was like, that's weird. That was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always cool to see with everybody with their lights on, all the lights in the stadium are down mm -hmm. and you can yeah, see the background. Yeah, you see all the cell phones. Yeah, is that what it was? Cell phones? That's, that's yeah, I can't do lighters, is, right? I suppose, you right? You don't do yeah. lighters, you do cell phones. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I did like in a Madonna, my favorite part of the Madonna performance was they had this dude bouncing on a tightrope. Yeah. Yes. That was cool. So random. I'm not, I'm not sure what that was, but it was really cool. Yeah. It was a neat And they part. did a huge backflip coming off. The mm -hmm. place went crazy, and they're like, oh, who's on stage? Oh, yeah, Madonna's there as well. But this guy just bounced on a tightrope. Yeah. 
Felt like bouncing fun. on his chest and on his back. It was weird. Yeah. Now, speaking of CeeLo Green and The Voice, did you see, we didn't talk about it. Did you see that commercial? An awesome commercial. About The Voice? Oh, yeah. yeah. They were all coming in and And, like, they're fighting with each other. And and yeah. Blake Shelton is huge. Is that country singer yeah. who's on the... Do you mean physically? Physically, like, yes, I'm talking. He he's, he's a big quite, guy. He is a big guy. He's a really big it was guy. A good, and that, you know, it didn't make my top ten only because I have seen enough of Betty White. Oh, but that was the. See, I, I me, love that Betty was White. the best moment I of that. I love Christmas. Betty White. You can't say moment. that. I love Finally, Betty somebody Aww. is wants me for my voice and not for my, my body. body. <laughs> Eyes up just, here, boys. Yeah. Eyes up here. <laughs> it, was, it was good. That that was a good commercial. Well, okay. Possibly a top the, ten. the old lady's ninety, so you probably. She's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, just in all honesty, top. there's nobody up there in Hollywood. Up there. Did you see her with a better positive spirit than Betty White? Did you see her birthday celebration special? That That was wonderful. That was pretty funny. That was pretty good. It was. All the old school and new school, everybody came back to celebrate her birthday. Now, last year at this time, everybody was talking about Christina Aguilera and her botching of the national national anthem. anthem. How did, who was it this year? Kelly 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 Clarkson. Clarkson. Do you know how she did? I've heard incredible things about that performance. So, I mean, most of the reviews I think have been pretty positive. I'm gonna give you my professional opinion (laughs) on this. Please do. Clearly clearly the best singer of this group. (laughs) It was not Whitney Houston. Well. Now Whitney Houston, there was some timing, and it was Whitney Houston, and there was a certain national spirit that was going on. Now I got something to say about that, actually. But I know it was taped. It, wasn't it came really... out a couple of years ago. It came out that it was a lip synced performance. Right. Well, Ooh. nonetheless, it was pretty pretty amazing that that day. That that's true. That's true. But Kelly, you know, I tend not to be a huge American Idol supporter, but Kelly Clarkson hit a home run last she night. She is quality. I, well, and I think that this is part of her comeback as well. She's recently, you know, she's coming out with some new music, coming back out to the forefront again. I hope that she can get back to where she was a couple of years ago when she, you know, Miss Independent and all of that. Right, that's been right. several years now. But mm-hmm. I mean, she. Since you've you been see gone. different things based whether she or Carrie or who is the most successful. You know, Catherine right. McPhee, though she's not even up the boat. She's going to be she smashed yeah. last night. Yeah. 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 The TV show. Yeah. I Which like her. Which is probably going to, I mean, if from, you all, like musical from everything television. that's being said, that's going to be that's going to be the one to watch. The, you know, mid-season premiere to actually Now, uh, one thing I did to. not like was Blake Shelton and Miranda Lambert singing America the Beautiful or whatever. Why did you not like that? Because they're country. Because they they, they 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 got that twangy. Well, but they're a power well, couple. They're this beautiful. You I know, they, realize they represent that. Represent the ideals. I'm, I'm just cool. saying. You know, the, only thing, the only they thing they did a good job. <laughs> they did. The only thing I didn't like about it is, and my wife and I were watching this together, and we laughed because at the end they hit the last note, and then they both looked. Had at that each other. sappy, yeah. yeah. And you're that, like, well, come, come on, country oh, boy. Like, country is come on. cheesy. Yeah, I mean, I was just like, cheesy that's country. The only country that's any good is Keith Urban. Or, oh, this is uh, an interesting discussion. Is Keith Urban or, um, oh my god. Clearly goodness. you love him. No. Garth no. Brooks. <laughs> Garth Brooks, thank you. <laughs> Garth Brooks. Oh, I've got friends and oh, stuff. Okay. Play- I don't understand. You like Garth Brooks, but you don't like these other people. I know, but there's he's something like the about Garth Brooks. No, he's, no, he is the epitome of awesome. I'm not, I will never insult Garth Brooks. I'm merely and saying. And Keith Urban is awesome too, but he's from Australia. So it's Alan cool. Jackson, all these years. Just no. no. So you're not. What? You know, my brother-in-law's a rock star. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But he's not a country star. No, he isn't. He's a rock so star. So he has a little bit of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're fans. We're fans. But anyways, <laughs> anything else to add? I think we're good. I probably <laughs> insulted everybody We've gone everywhere there. from country to Madonna. Do I need yes. to apologize for anything? Probably. I mean, Probably. I mean, it's... You are in Tennessee. Ah, we'll think about it maybe next segment. <laughs> Formal apology. Well, everybody stick with us. We got the things that matter coming up. We'll be right back. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. 
Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Byron Winters with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Contact me for all of your business insurance needs. From general liability to workers' comp, commercial auto, and business umbrellas, Landmark Insurance has you covered. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. There we go, right back. We're ready this time. Oh, Welcome back. Yes, we are on time. Uh, thanks for joining us on this Tuesday morning. Yes. Uh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was talking to them. Well, you were looking at me. Yeah, very confusing. Let's take a quick look at our local weather. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day today. Sunny, high of 58. You can't beat that. Tomorrow, very similar, a little cooler, mid 50s, mostly sunny. And then Thursday looks almost identical. High and about 54 degrees, mostly sunny. And that's supposed to trend through the weekend, as my friend. Thank goodness. I'm Paul hoping Bears that March say. will dip down and we'll actually get some snow in March. Oh. Or at least some cold. Because they said that we're going to be like 15 degrees warmer for the average for this month than normal. I can oh. live with that. Ugh. I can live with that. It is good on my on my heating bill, I'll tell you that. Now, so, so many of our viewers, I always hesitate to say fans, <laughs> Right, rightly so. Rightly so. So many of our viewers are very excited about this next segment, which we like to call The Things That Matter. My name is Matt, and these are The Things That Matter. We've talked about him before, Tukaru Kobayashi, a competitive eating champ, conquered Philadelphia's annual Gustatory Gorge Fest by eating 337 chicken wings in a half hour before a crowd of nearly 20,000 at the Wing Bowl 20, which is like the Super Bowl, but it's the Wing Bowl. The Japanese phenom demolished the record of 255 set last year by Jonathan Super Squib. But I thought 337 wings, I actually went down to Chattanooga once, and I actually got um, you know, some, like, a, like a dozen wings or whatever. I ate 10 of them, and I felt like I was going to be sick. 337 chicken wings. In a half hour. That makes sense. In a half hour. Yeah. A um, couple things about this. There's like 170 chicken out there that are on wingless. It's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad. All That's you PETA true. lovers. That's true. That's I mean, this is a good place to protest. Uh, <laughs> secondly... Uh, what was the wimpy record at only 255? It must have been wimpy because, I mean, the guy blew Come it away. On. But third, 20,000 people watch this thing. I know, right? <laughs> Seriously? You know how much money 20, he won? 20,000 people? He won $20,000 for winning this competitive uh, Maybe contest. everybody had to pay an entry fee of one buck. There you go. There you go. 20,000 people. Um. This is something I've never heard of before, and, and now you will have heard of it, and you probably haven't heard of it before either. The world's only Asperomancer, I don't, I'm not sure what it is either, Jemima Packington casts asparagus spears in the air and then reads the shapes they form when they land, saying that she can see the future in the asparagus. Wow. This is good. Number one... You don't see the name Jemima very much anymore. I know, right? I mean, uh, and, and with a name like Jemima. I mean, I know that's off topic a little bit. If she was reading bit. the future, it would be like syrup on a pancake or oh, something that she'd wow. be able to read, right? Yeah, I just yeah. want to know how that happened. Because with runes, the, the concept is one side is marked and the other side is blank. So how do you read asparagus Well, spheres? asparagus, some of them, they have the florets at the top. Yeah, and then they have the, but the if you throw it, the, I mean... The, 
It's smooth. Well, and all... Sarah, if everybody could <laughs> do it, then the importance of this story in That's Jemima true. would be diminished it's greatly. It's significant, yes. Thank so, you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> disparaging comments. From oh, I'm just did you disparaging. Did you just throw dis that, that's disparagus. <laughs> that's that's simply disparagus. Disparagus com comments. This is what you get on Tuesday morning, folks. <laughs> the Today Show is this on. This is what I'd want to Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This weekend, show. when you go uh, wherever you go to eat and you, you make some asparagus, you might be able to see what's going to happen in the future. So she really threw them up in the air. Yeah, apparently. She throws them up, they land, and then she reads them. Cool. And she can tell the future. Excellent. Let's what? see if we can book her for the show. <laughs> That's, that'd be a great. That'd be awesome. We'd have to get close-ups of that. Does it say where she's from? N no, and um, I'd prefer not to know. <laughs> One man in Spain is kicking himself after the entire town, um, his town, won and shared in a nine hundred and fifty million dollar lottery jackpot. A billion dollars, almost. Everyone except for him. What? Costas Mitsotakis. <laughs> had been overlooked when a town homemakers group made the rounds selling lottery tickets to raise money. And they all they sold the same lottery ticket, and so everybody, that lottery ticket won, everybody gets $950 million except for Costas. <laughs> because for some reason, they decided, we don't, we, we don't want to sell to Costas. Costas' money is not worth anything to us. So everybody in town splits nine hundred and fifty million dollars. It's, it's like it's like two million dollars per one person. Guy. It's like two million dollars per person, except for him. You know what's really funny about this story? <laughs> Let's fast forward like two years when everybody's built their new homes, <laughs> except for Cost. He's living in a little Poor apartment Costas. on the side. You know, so in this town, when they talk about the poor in town, they're actually talking about one guy. It's Costas. <laughs> Should we develop a program for, for the poor in this community? I, I will say this. Ah, Costas if, should have bought a ticket. If I were Costas, I would move. I think, I think there's, there's no better way of people saying you're not wanted here than by you do not get $2 million. You know what he said? He was quoted as saying after this announcement came out. What's that? You know what this lottery ticket scandal cost us? No, 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 he didn't say that. I don't think he said that at all. I, yeah. He did the asparagus thing. I just the asparagus. <laughs> all right, you're right, I did. I, I, I deserved it. Okay. Right. Keep going, you got any more? This, yes, I do. Um, a wealthy Florida man has adopted his 42-year-old girlfriend as a daughter. Wow, okay. He's, in a, he's got a lawsuit. And, and, and in order for the lawsuit, uh, for him to avoid re letting all his assets go in this lawsuit, he adopts his 42-year-old girlfriend as his daughter, and therefore she can maintain ownership of the assets and that he does not have to declare them for the lawsuit. So what, basically, the people suing him, it means they don't have as much money that they get from him because his assets are belonging to someone else. To his girlfriend slash daughter. His new what? daughter whom he is romantically involved with. That's wow. awkward. Yeah, well, this how is... How is that a better idea than... I mean, could marrying her have not done the same? I don't think so. I don't. He didn't want to make that no, kind of commitment. Yeah. You don't want to... <laughs> Easy, Sarah. The crazy thing is, your daughter. the you crazy can thing send is, your daughter off to college. Your wife, you got to have her around all the time. Right? He's forty-four years old, so it's not like she's forty-two and he's like sixty-five. You had her when he was two. Uh, yeah, exactly. He is forty-four Ooh. years old. <laughs> wow. I, it's just ridiculous to me. I just thought that was ridiculous. I actually saw this story on television. I understand, oh, really? Yeah, I understand the family uh, suing him. It, he he was actually arrested. He's suing, being sued for wrongful death. He killed oh, somebody right. in a uh, DUI. Right, accident. he ran a stop sign. Yeah, something and like hit that. Hit somebody, and uh, that's horrible. Right. So this is. So uh, I have no love for this guy. Mm. No. Apparently, his daughter does. Uh, <laughs> apparently, 
apparently. Wow. The question is, does he have children? Um, oh, he does now. Awkward. I don't that know would be about then. Hey, meet my girlfriend and Last your new sister. sister. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, here's oh. one, and, and, uh, and uh, this is one that I just found this morning, and I had to include it. And um, the story is that male altruism, you know what altruism is, man? No. Altruism is um, doing things, doing good for other people without any thought that you'd get it in return. Well, that's so, apparently why I didn't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing good for people without getting anything back. Male altruism, that's men altruism, may not be due to generous spirit after all. Instead, a new study, this is uh, you know, the whole psychology thing, I'm a psychology okay. instructor. New study suggests men put on their best behavior when attractive members of the opposite sex are nearby. Shocking. <laughs> this, so, so I was thinking, if we wanted to see men act better, then we need to put beautiful women all around us. <laughs> and you'll get better behavior be from better. men. This is, I, I, this is what's so strange I about married, life. I married a beautiful woman. So, so you're good all, all the time. time. And, and we actually start acting better that's, whenever that's Sarah's right. here. Or if Jennifer walks in the room, we start acting better all the time. You, well. I don't know if I would. So, Sarah, <laughs> you, you, you are a, a member of the fairer sex. I am. What's your opinion on this story? What do you think? Do, do, men, do, you, do you notice, do you ever catch men in, in that situation where they don't know you're around and they're belching and act, and then they see you and they straighten up I and mean, they're like, hey. Yes, I do think that the majority of time having an attractive woman around makes men behave better. But I don't think that, I mean, altruism in itself, you're saying the definition is basically selfless acts of right. good nature, right. good intent. Right. I think men have it in them to do those acts regardless of, you know, that. Oh, but, you sure. way overestimated. <laughs> I'm just saying, they may have it in them, but they refuse to unless a beautiful no. woman is in the room. <laughs> no, actually, they did a study, and they had a beautiful man and a beautiful woman, a handsome man, and a beautiful <laughs> woman, and, uh, and they would have um, opportunities to give, like, to donate money, uh, like just like $10 or something. And whenever the, the handsome man was there, men would not uh, give any more money or any increase in donation. Mm -hmm. But when the beautiful woman was there, they did. Women, when the beautiful man was there, or when the beautiful woman didn't was there, it. didn't affect it at that all. That is interesting. Women, they would give if they give, or they didn't if they didn't. Yeah. But men would always give more if a beautiful woman was there. See, I would want to know if, it's, if it changes if someone else that they wanted to impress, like with women, maybe if their boss were there. Or if someone, you know, if they were a different, That's a good point. I mean, I do think women have that. We are still influenced by outside. Sure, sure. Or maybe like their friends were there. Yeah, or something. someone else that they. But this this reminds me a little bit of that movie uh, that's just coming out on Valentine's Day coming up. Uh, what's it called? This is War with Reese Witherspoon. Yes. yes. And these two guys it's are. Two spies. They're trying to impress this one right. beautiful woman. And right. that's kind of the same idea. It's a beautiful woman. These two guys are trying to impress her. Which looks hilarious. Yeah. And I does. love Reese Witherspoon. So it does. That's going to be good. So. Which does remind me of the story last week from Things That Matter, where you talked about a club that would only let you in if you were a model. There you or go. Or you're a beautiful person. And people scathed the club. But the truth is, if you're thinking about it from an altruistic <laughs> We have scientific angle. research <laughs> that They says, were actually wise. People will be more behaved in our club. There you go. Tip better, not get in fights. There you not go. Not get out of control. I mean, that's, yeah, anytime you want to impress someone, which I guess, I mean, physical stimuli are a good way to force that. So that makes, it makes sense. There you go. See, so, so we should stop, we should stop disparaging our beautiful people. We should allow our beautiful people to just live their lives and assuming they're going to be they positive influences. They make us better. <laughs> they make us better. Yes, we, that's just despairious, and it could potentially cost us this program. My name is Matt, and those are the things that matter. You, you had one more that I really wanted you, to oh, share. Oh, you wanted me to we, share? We got another like thirty okay, seconds. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll do one more. I'll do one more. My name is Matt. These are the things that matter. <laughs> Police in Florida arrested a woman earlier this month after she allegedly destroyed a pink, a pink flamingo lawn ornament oh, by violently banging it against a man's front door. <laughs> Police documented the destruction, estimating that the flamingo was worth $10 prior to its demise. 
Uh, I like that, how they had to put the cost value. $10. In like we couldn't guess that. Literally, <laughs> a woman attacked a man's home. By the way, ten dollars might might have been slightly on the high side. Yeah. <laughs> they, she attacked a man's home, and she it was vandalism. But the only thing touched was the pink flamingo on. Yeah. Did, you he, know, did, he, it, did it damage the door? Is what I want to. Have know. you ever seen no. those pink it flamingos didn't damage that the just door. shattered? The yeah. <laughs> it's you know, like plastic. It's, it's, it's you know. It's, the thing I like about this story, highlighted in yellow, as you can see. The thing I like about this story <laughs> is. I wonder what the backstory is there. Uh -huh. I mean, this isn't a random act of aggression. Oh, I think she found a pink flamingo. flamingo and says, I hate pink flamingos. So she grabbed it and destroyed it. So I'm an guessing it had flamingo. very little to do with the pink flamingo. Doubting, so. yeah. Seriously, though, if it's a scorned woman and she's mad at this guy, she's going to choose something other than a pink flamingo. Long yeah, I don't know. But I want to question her judgment in there being some sort of relationship between her and the owner of a pink flamingo. <laughs> That's a good point. Really? That is a good point. Don't expect sane action. You know, that guys, is a good point. The guy's like, I can't believe she broke my pink <laughs> flamingo. flamingo. I will tell you, though, Anything I will tell you uh, that it was an animalist act. Animalist? It's kind of like racist or sexist. She hates pink flamingos. I'm and sure I that's what it was. And I think this is just a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. uh, just a very wrong thing. This is I just, mean, I don't blame her. These things are hideous. Disparagus. <laughs> Disparagus. You're animalist, too? I can't believe that. I can't believe Stick that. with us. We got one more segment. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6:30 and midnight, where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on in the spotlight with Brittany Jackson. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. We're back. Everyone, we took Got a lot, lot of time minutes. on that last segment. We do. That was a fun <laughs> segment. Though. I know. I know. One. You guys got favorite people today? Eli Manning <laughs> is my favorite person. <laughs> oh, my favorite person. Uh, and I'm going to give you a second to think about it. My favorite person is Kay. Kay is a waitress at Cracker Barrel here in town. Oh, yeah. Came up to me this, uh, yesterday morning, came up to me and said, Hey, are you Matt Ryerson? I said, which is always nervous. You might get, you know, subpoenaed really? or something. Really? All right. She said, No, I see you on television. You guys do a great job. So, if Kay, if oh, you're watching. Oh, Kay. Good to see you, Kay. Good to see you too, Kay. Absolutely. And Dan Swafford, Judge Swafford. Yes. Who we know watches every Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. Religiously. <laughs> Sarah, favorite person? Oh, goodness. This is horrible. Do you, I, know, do you know a person? I don't know any people. You, <laughs> don't, know you don't have any favorites. <laughs> I have too many favorites. Oh, that's right there. now. Yeah, MIA. MIA. So that a scene Which, gesture. Madonna. Thank you. And lastly, we want to say, Greg, congratulations to Jennifer James, who didn't even bother to watch the Super Bowl. No, it's because people from Mother Russia only love <laughs> hockey or something. That's right. She only watches hockey. She doesn't watch Super Bowl. There you go. What is up with that? <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday morning. We appreciate you joining us every week. Hope to see you next week. Have a great one.